Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. I'm back again with University Physics Part 1. These are the homework questions that I got for Chapter 1. So let's go ahead and dive right into them. Now the first question that I got was under 1.2 units and standards. Number 8. What are the SI units of length, mass, and time? Well, if you look back on page 34 of University Physics Part 1, you'll see that the unit of length is defined as a meter. Okay, a unit of mass is a kilogram, and a unit of time is a second. This is just one of those things you have to look up and know. Okay? Let's go on to the next question. Now question number nine is basically a definitions question. Do you understand the difference between a base unit and a derived unit? Now the answer for that is unsurprisingly found on page 34, the page of definitions. So a base unit is specifically defined and uh, an example of a base unit would be a meter. The base unit definition of a meter, at least for our purposes, is the distance that light travels in 1 over 3 times 10 to the 8th seconds. Now a derived unit, that equals a base unit with math. So basically an algebraic expression of a base unit. So a, a kilometer is defined as 1,000 times a meter. So the base unit is not the kilometer, the meter is. The kilometer is the derived unit. And finally, what's the difference between a base quantity and a derived quantity? Well, that's actually kind of a cool question. Say we count out 1,000 pennies, and we weigh that. Then we take an unknown quantity of pennies and weigh it. So the number of pennies would be 1,000 divided by our measured weight of those pennies times the weight that uh, of the unknown number of pennies. And our answer would come out, well, that's, that's a thousand pennies. The weights cancel, and we get our answer in pennies. So that's an example of a base quantity versus a derived quantity. Now in question number 14, which is next, we're going to have a look at significant figures scientific notation and order of magnitude. Aren't you glad you skipped that video when you went right to the homework? You may want to go back and have a quick look at it. So there's number 14, and you see they ask a lot of things there. Um, there's a lot of parts to that section, mostly just to kind of run you through and get you used to dealing with these numbers. So let's go ahead and just review it real quick. Now what scientific notation does is it reduces your numbers to a standard form uh, that gives you a lot of information. So for example, you're going to have a number A with a, with a decimal place, and then you're going to have B, C, and D. And then it's going to be multiplied by 10 to some power, 10 to the power of n. Okay? So when we do that, we realize that we can actually count the number of significant digits. Remember that we have a single digit to the left of the decimal place in scientific notation, and then all numbers to the right of the decimal place are also considered significant. So that has four significant figures. Now this is the order of magnitude. So for example, if you had 10 to the n, and then you had 10 to the n plus 1, the difference between the two is that this is one order of magnitude greater. So it has to do with the power of 10 that you're multiplying by. And each order of magnitude is different by a factor of 10 from the orders of magnitude above and below it. So let's go ahead and have a look at the ones that are in the problem. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of these uh, questions here. First of all, the mass of the Earth, 5.81 times 10 to the 18th kilograms. The magnitude of that is 18. Next, we want to look at the mass of the Moon's atmosphere, which is 25,000 kilograms. But they're trying to get a little tricky here. Let's go ahead and put that in scientific notation, 2.5 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. And that's magnitude 4. Next, we have the mass of the Earth's hydrosphere, the oceans. 1.4 times 10 to the 21 kilograms, and that's, of course, magnitude 21. D is the mass of the Earth itself, 5.97, almost 6, times 10 to the 24. Next, we're going to go ahead and have a look at the mass of the Moon, 7.34 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. How much bigger is the Earth than the Moon? Well, notice that these numbers here aren't all that far off. So let's just look at the difference in magnitude. So here we have 22, and here we have 24. 
The difference between them is a factor of two orders of magnitude, and that's about 100 times. So the Earth is about 100 times as massive as the Moon is. The distance from the Earth to the Moon, 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters. That works out to 384,000 kilometers, or 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. Okay, that's the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And what's that work out to in kilometers? Well, we would remove 3 from this 11. And we would get 1.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers. That's uh, 1.5 million kilometers, by the way. I'm sorry, I screwed that up. It didn't look right. That's 150 million kilometers, by the way. 10 to the 8th. And 1.5 million would be 10 to the 6th. 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. That's the radius of the Earth. And that's 6,370 one kilometers roughly. Okay, next, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31. That's the mass of an electron. And finally, the mass of the Sun is about 2 times 10 to the 31 kilograms. So that would be 30. That's negative 27. And that's negative 31. And that's the answer to that question. Now tell me that's not fun. Okay, the next question is pretty typical of something you'll see on a physics test. They will give you something that you have to calculate into something usable. So in question number 19, they're asking us to calculate the number of atoms in a bacterium, assuming that the mass of an atom in a bacterium is 10 times the mass of a proton. So we have two questions. First of all, what's the mass of the proton? Well, fortunately, that was in the last question, and that is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Okay, so let's just do a little bit of math. So what is the mass of an atom? Well, it's 10 times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Okay, well what's that equal? Well, it's quite simply it's 9.11 times 10 to the what? Well, what's 10 to the negative 31 times 10 to the 1? You add them together, so it's times 10 to the negative 30 kilograms. That's the mass of an atom. Now, how would we calculate the number of atoms in a bacterium. Well, let's take the mass of a bacterium and divide it by the mass of an atom. Now on page 10, we get the mass of a bacterium. And that would be 1 times 10 to the negative 15 kilograms. Then we divide that by the mass of an atom, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 30 kilograms. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide 1 point by 9.11. Okay, so 1 divided by 9.11. Okay, so that's going to give us 0 0.1097. Well, 9.8. We'll go with 9.8. Okay, now obviously that's not in scientific notation, right? But let's go ahead and fix that first. So we've got minus 15 divided by minus 30. When you divide exponents, what you do is you take the minus 15 and then you subtract the minus 30. So that's going to give us times 10 to the 15. All right, now we have one more step that we have to make. We got to get this into scientific notation. We're going to have to back that up one and that will make this 10 to the 14th and that will be our answer. Okay, so so far everything that we've had has just been a little bit of math uh, on top of some standard units. Now in the next section they're going to give us different units and have us convert those units into other units. So for example, we'll be given a question in cubic miles and they'll want to know how many cubic kilometers that represents. So we'll do that in the next video. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Have some fun with this stuff.